The Moth is a nonprofit organization that was started by a poet and novelist named George Dawes Green. He invited three friends to tell true stories in his living room, and that was the very first Moth Night. So now we've got six different programs, and we tour internationally, and we really look to inspire people who otherwise don't see themselves as storytellers to know that they too have a story to tell. Today we were teaching a workshop with students from a high school in New Orleans. Hey, my name is Al Johnson. I'm the principal of Grace King High School. We have a great diversity on our campus. We have Pakistani students. We have students from India. We have students from China, from all over. They are all characters. And everyone has a story to tell. And I think this will give them the opportunity to feel free and comfortable of telling their story. Today we wanted to go off of these beautiful essays that you've written to get here and go through maybe just a first pass at where you think the story might be. Kind of like what we would say a first draft is. Um, when I was 17 years old, I got pregnant and it was my senior year and I had to drop out of school for two years so I could raise my daughter because I didn't have anyone to help me. And now I'm 20 years old back in high school, my senior year, and I'll finish this year. It felt to me like we were trying to like learn how to communicate with each other and make it easier for us to tell the story, like make us be more creative. We saw how, how creative everybody else can be and gave everybody confidence to like show themselves more. So when we're thinking about where we choose the scenes to tell our story, often it's, it's really helpful to think, what was the first time this happened? One day I got up, told my mom I couldn't take it anymore, I couldn't handle being made fun of anymore. But once we hook the audience, everyone's going to lean in and we're going to want to hear the rest of the story. So awesome. I'm excited to hear these two stories. <laughs> what I really hope is that they get to have our little rock star moment, like a moment where they get to stand in front of everyone they know and say what they know to be true. I'm a character, for real. <laughs> How you guys doing today? Feeling good? Yeah, all right. We have amazing stories for you here. I opened my eyes into another school called Bonneville. I entered my classroom, sat on my desk peacefully without a word. I looked around to find any girl to speak to, but I didn't find any. All the students were looking at me, not just because I'm a girl, but it's about the hijab that I'm wearing. I realized that racism is still here, and even though it was never directed towards me because I always had a white best friend, but now I know that I can walk away from it and I would just call it a lesson learned. The new girl and I, you know, we're having so much fun at the monkey bars. We're swinging, we're laughing, we're smiling, we're talking. And then um, my, te um, my friends come towards me and they ask me, do you want to be friends with us or be friends with them? I decided to be friends with my girls. And I ditched the new girl. I told the new girl, I'm sorry, I can't be your friend. And then it's time to go back to science class and she's crying. In the end, I felt awful that I rejected this friend. We never talk again in four years and I, I miss him a lot. I don't even know if he's alive or if he's dead or where he lives. And every, every day I think about him, I think about what, I, what has he done and um, where is he at. I was tired of feeling sorry for myself. I was like, I ain't gonna be alone no more. I'm tired of detention. I'm tired of getting F's and all this. And uh, I went up and I was like, <laughs> and I was like, today I'm gonna make a friend. I don't care what I have to do. I'm gonna make a friend today. So there was this girl Peyton I had met at the beginning of the school year, and I was like, okay, maybe I'll make a friend today. And I just remember getting a phone call from my friend. And she's like, hey, yeah, Teen Mom's on, just reminded me to call you. I really hate that show. That's really not how it is. I just couldn't go up and say, stop it, because I was too depressed and too sad to do anything. But then one of the other students came up and grabbed the kid by the shirt and pushed him against the wall and said, du tust es doch einmal, ich gebe dich einen Mund eine. And that meant, if you do that again, I'll beat you up. And I was grateful for somebody standing up for me and being nice to me, and I was grateful that, for that. When I got hurt, I kind of realized what I was making other people feel, and it kind of made me feel bad. And I stopped bullying. Now I'm in high school, and I'm on the wrestling team. 
I'm getting myself prepared for my dream to come up. I am my own hero. Ladies and gentlemen, our storytellers.